Um, good, sure good morning. Is. I almost said good morning. God bless. That's how my day went. How'd your day my, go? My day went apparently better than yours. What okay. bad? No. Just no. I got to have a chat with our good buddy Ron Douglas. Oh my uh, God. Precious, 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 precious human. Wow, he's just like he's like the Easter Bunny, just dropping gold nuggets all over the house, man. You know, you gotta <laughs> love it. I mean, he's he's fun. He's just, I was like, Ron, are you bored? He's like, I kind of am. I was like, well, thank God. <laughs> I was like, because we're not bored. <laughs> we're trying to make things happen. So thank you. Love <laughs> having him in the house. Love, you know. I spent a few a uh, few minutes with him too last week and got more value from him in fifteen minutes than I did paying a coach last year two thousand dollars U.S. So. Yeah, we gotta love Ron. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be blasting Ron stuff up here um, here very soon, so we get to make sure folks plug into Ron. I mean, the guy is just amazing, uh, just like Tanya Eberhardt, so many other people. You got Doctor CJ, yeah. Constance Leland. I mean, we are just blessed, and and that's that's the calling card, man. It, it, you know, doesn't matter where you're at. If you want to do good things, be around great people, heart centered ways, get things done, and you come to the right place. It, it's unbelievable. That's right. She whiz. So, so you um, ready to go, dude? Oh, I'm. I, my internet's not happy. What'd you say? I said, are ah. you ready to go? Hang on. Are you ready to rumble? <laughs> well, he's sorry. That's how I know I'm getting old. I'm like, I'm like why, why are you saying I got to make the face for some reason? I'm not. All right, ah. I'm. Yeah. I'm gonna boot you off, dude. <laughs> Let, let's run the. Let's run it. Let's run the let's beautiful beat. Let's go. Beat let's. Go. Nope. Nobody watches this first part anyway. <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, Are you going to hit the button? Yeah, apparently not. So, you know, I think you're going to have to do it. <laughs> okay. Well, watch it. Look, magic wand. Look. Boom. Are you looking to grow your business and your mindset alongside a fun and awesome pack? Grab a chair and your favorite beverage and join Mike Ashabrainer, the business mechanic, and his win-win network for the Hounds of Business Happy Hour. Hey, we've got amazing folks to spotlight in the Hounds and even friends of the Hounds, man. I mean, people who, you know, I won here, but, you know, they got to take their time. We want, we want to slow roll our process, right? So <laughs> uh, Christine Bell, wow, right? So if you're not familiar with the hounds in my style, when people come to me and they say, oh, I want to learn my business marketing, you know, uh, and sales on LinkedIn, 70, I did the math, 75% of the time I tell people no, and it's not some BS sales thing, right? It's actually because you need another pack member. Right. So we got bald people running around getting haircuts when they don't need them or want them. So people were dropping money everywhere and wondering why they're not any better in, after ten thousand dollars in debt and or, or paid. And they're about in the same spot. So one of the tenant of the hounds is, hey, look, talk to me. If I can't help you, I'll tell you if I can, I, I will. But if you need someone else and most entrepreneurs need Christine Bell, people who are expanding their business. Well, I, I'm really good at this. Well, now you want to be this. Right. Remember the cable company? That didn't last too long. Now it's got to be a communications company. So Christine Bell is the go-to. If you're trying to expand, if you want to do it right the first time, if you want to learn all the stuff you just possibly can't know, that is Christine Bell. Uh, she is amazing, understands this. She's worked with major brands. She is not new to this, okay? 20 years plus experience. Uh, yeah, save yourself time and money. And here's the thing. Well, I'm getting all preachy, but this is good shit. Take notes, okay? It's good stuff because I messed this up long enough, all right? It's going to cost you. It, it, it's either going to cost you not doing it because now your marketing or whatever is going to have to compensate for it, or you just do it right the first time and, and solve problems and help people. All right. That, that, so go scan the code, check Christine. Uh, she's got a, a, a bi-weekly webinar that will blow you out of the water. And thank you so much, Christine, because you make me look good. All right. I send you my clients and they're happier with me. All right. So that's what the hounds is about. It's not about me. All right. Now, I don't know. I tried my my tail off to fix this. That's all right, okay. Dad Gummit. So that's all right. All right. Isabel, talk. 
tell them what you do now. Because I, I can't even get the graphic right. I sure as hell can't get the words right. <laughs> yeah, it's going to be hard to to uh, scan the QR code. But, you know, they can find me on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, LinkedIn, so I'm, Isabel. I, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm the rebel sales strategist. So I help sales management to get the most out of their team. It is as easy as that. I, I use an absolute phenomenal tool from Switzerland, it's called the Nova Profile. It's a psychometric testing, but it doesn't test competencies. It tests cognitive behavior preferences, and it is amazing. And next week, I'm gonna come for five minutes at the beginning of the show. I'm just telling this to Mike because he didn't know yet, because he's doing his tomorrow morning, and I can't wait until he tells you all about it. So that's what I do. Hit me up on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah, uh, we'll go make a comment if you got time so people know. Isabel Fortin, thank you so much. And you make it fun. She's a hounds leader, uh, pack leader, and wow. Uh, anybody can help me out uh, all day long. Is I'm same. the mic but, keeper. <laughs> yeah, you're going to meet another one here soon, man. That guy. Pray for that guy. All right, so um oh the anthology holy cow dr cj so dr constance leland as she is on linkedin go go and, and do this this was amazing they said you do you want to write and co-author in a book an anthology to help business people you know with all this stuff we have to go through because most of it's internal right we know how to do or we can find how to do things marketing and stuff but if we don't believe it and we don't and we feel like we're weird or something's holding us back, man. That's the problem. What's in between the two ears? So I and the guy coming on today, right? Pack leader D. Grant Smith. Oh, instrumental in helping me write this. I rambled. The man made sense of it. There you go. So this is amazing. I, I've been reading this and I can't wait to finish it. Getting to know amazing heart centered professionals is so inspiring seeing their stories, right? Seeing where they come from, where how they overcome. This is not a fluff book. This is a book like a how-to manual. <laughs> You're gonna find several people that will inspire you, but give practical advice on how to get unstuck or how to take that next level. It's an encouragement. It's like having a friend there, you know, but this friend's actually done this, right? <laughs> so go scan the QR code. You can go to Amazon and they're, wherever you at in the country, all right? It hit international bestseller in one day, uh, she had self-published it. All right. So congratulations. Let's celebrate with the great Dr. CJ. Uh, also, we're going to brag on her a little bit more. All right. Um, she and, and wow, she hit her goal over what? 53. Her goal was 50,000 subscribers on YouTube uh, by December. Well, dadgummit, it's it's March. She She's got it. it. She got it. Wow. So. Not not only is the woman brilliant with 50 different doctor degrees, she does it. She's a, she does business yeah. all over the place. She makes this available to folks who otherwise couldn't afford it, couldn't have access to it. Thank you so much, Dr. CJ. Her and Level Up Academy, right? They have, uh, hey, they've embedded in the hounds. Man, we are so honored and blessed for that. Uh, so make sure that you scan the QR code. There's nothing that you can need. Hey, and I would say in life and business that she can't help with. She's got somebody or something uh, to tap into and just she's like Santa Claus, man. She's just going around blessing people and stuff. And seriously, hats off to you. We celebrate with you. Uh, so wow. generous. Life changing. Yeah. yeah, she is. So, so generous. Fantastic. Yeah. Yep. So definitely connect with her or that's just crazy not to. Hey, and this. Th so I'm, I'm going to tell everybody since y'all are here, you get to hear the real. Um me and Jason, we've known each other, I think, almost two years or maybe two years. It's been a while. And we just recently reconnected. I mean, it met last several months. But, you know, we, you know how it is. The timing's off, right? You like somebody, but you just kind of go. I was I didn't know what I was doing. He was trying to figure out what he's doing. And then life happens and we reconnect and boom, right? So my point of this is don't count your chickens for the hatch. All right. Just, just hey. If you got a good person, put them on pause, stay up with them, and amazing things like this happen. So let's bring up the great Dustin. Now, he is representative over there with HR4U, all the amazing things they're doing. Dustin, hey, man, thank you so much for being here, brother. You know, I got to say, I hate to disappoint everybody. I'm not the handsome chase, and I know everybody was looking for the beard, and you get babyface Nelson over here. So I'll do my best to represent him, but it's a pleasure to be here. 
Babyface Nelson, it's our pleasure. You, you look, look at who you're with. You'll never look as goofy on this show, man. <laughs> Nobody has that problem. So t- tell us, first of all, man, what, what do you do? What, what is your thing? man? You're on LinkedIn. And so what do you do personally? Yep. So jack of all trades. Uh, but no, I'm a award winning keynote speaker. So I travel all over the country uh, talking with corporations and uh, private organizations have been blessed to reach over five million people now in the last two years. A uh, three-time published author, best-selling author on the first one, and then my full-time job, because the others aren't jobs, those are passions. Full-time job is I'm the CEO of Beyond the Horizon Consulting, and we work with companies all around the country, both over a billion and under a billion, for leadership consulting and basically having people enjoy leadership again. It doesn't have to suck. So that's what I get to do and, and part-time hang out with Jason and the HR4U crew. Hey, that's awesome, man. I love that. So how did you how did you get involved with this? Because you're a busy guy. You're doing things. You know, obviously there's something and it's important. So how did you get to know Chasen and fall in love with the mission? man? So I met Chasen probably around the same time you did. It was we've known each other for a couple of years now. And I saw a post and he's like, hey, seeking people partners for, you know, these initiatives. I'm like, okay, people partner, I'm people focused. So I reached out to him and and we had a 20 minute Zoom call and this was fresh, like before he had his um, nonprofit established, this was before that. And he's like, Dustin, here's my vision. And I'm like, I like that vision. That's something I could get behind. And so we stayed in touch. And I gotta say, when he sees this, truly I'm proud of how far he and everybody else have come with HR for you. Inc. Oh, yeah. So like I said, I've seen it before it was the actual nonprofit. So it just meshes well with what I focus on. Yeah, man, that was the same thing with me. It's, it's, it, I we, me and him joke. I don't know if he gets mad. It, all passion and no clue. See, now we're all yeah. passion and a little clue because we got people like y'all that help us that, that like, how are we going to do this? I'm like, I don't know. Go ask the other 120 brilliant people over here. You know, like, yeah. So he's no dummy, man. And, and again, yeah. his passion, is, is what ignited this guy's not doing this for any other reason because he cares about people so if you don't mind tell us about hr for you and then tell us about this event that we can tap into share be a part of man absolutely so hr for you ain't basically it's it's helping people uplift employees with a focus on living wage you know as the world gets tougher it only makes it more tougher when you put in all these hours and put in all this work but yet you don't feel like you're included, you don't feel like you belong. And it's actually tough to pay when you don't make that living wage that we're talking about. So HR for you ain't really focuses on that people initiative. But what's also cool is Chasen has visions for other programs, Transformation Kitchen. And I'll talk about that real quick. And this March for Good event is going towards Transformation Kitchen, which is kind of the big project that The doors are looking to open in October, and and it's really cool because this kitchen provides an opportunity just for individuals who may not have that opportunity, regardless of where they come from and what the struggle was or how they got there. It's going to provide means to after school program for uh, food, and it's also going to serve as a transition for people who are looking to get back out there with real life skills who can go on to earn a living wage through uh, application, which is really cool. So that's kind of why I'm here tonight to highlight that March for Good event. Um, The other cool thing is it's free, absolutely free. So when I seen it come up, I told Chasen I wanted to kind of be selfish and and sponsor that bad boy because it got me really excited for running. I had to get my stretchy pants on, uh, which you don't want to see. So uh, everybody who signs up for it, they do it for free. All you have to do is put in the code that's provided on the screen, no cost to you and rally people around you put in for, you know, per mile on a treadmill or climbing or a sit up. Just, you know, don't get donuts. That doesn't count, you know, one donut at a time. So it's just really good way to get the community involved and help us launch Transformation Kitchen. Or you could do like I did, just give money because I don't feel like walking that much. Yeah, you can do that, too. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah, I'll pay not to walk. There's there's my thing. Hey, hounds, if you want to pay to sit on the couch, you could double it. And, you know, like I told people at the wedding, same concept. I was like, if you pay me double, you don't have to come to the wedding. My wife's like, no, that's not how it works. I said, oh, we'll make a million dollars. Nobody wants to come. So um, not like this, though. Dude, I love this organization. I, I have never and the hounds have never officially endorsed anything. 
I mean, this. So th this is it. And honestly, it's the team, it's the people, it's the passion. Here's what I love about it. It's self it's self sustaining. The people mm -hmm. who are it's not just handouts. It's hands up, and people are the transformation kitchen is creating jobs and it's creating uh, less food insecurity. Correct. Like it's it's yeah. helping so many different things at one time. Yes, absolutely. You got to th uh, think too, and, and not anything against educational systems, but a lot of times we go through life and we're only taught what we need to learn, but we're not necessarily taught what we need to know. And there's a big difference with the two. And so some of us, like myself, I ended up becoming a pretty successful business owner. And I say that with a humble background. Uh, for me, degrees weren't it, you know, but for some of my friends, degrees were it. So just to your point, Mike, like you were talking about, this can be an opportunity to show somebody who has maybe been told, you know, hey, you got to go to college, you got to do this, you got to do that. There are other ways to go be successful. And that's what I love about this program, too, as it offers that opportunity. I love it. Isabel, you didn't check the chat, did you? I'm <laughs> just you. checking it now. You can't, you can't. No, no, no. I was answering comments, dude. I <laughs> oh, my oh goodness. man, Mike, you know, uh, tell us, uh, how, how can we help? How, what, what can we do other than contributing to this uh, March for good? And like, how can we support you? Get the word out. Number one, number two, the donations, obviously, um, if you're a fan of sit downs and not sit ups, you know, sit down, donate, that's fine too. Um, I used to jokingly say I only do sit downs, not sit ups, but you can do that. Um, there's a couple different teams that you can join and support them. Really a big thing is the more that people see this, the more eyes we can get on it and know that it's free, costs nothing to sign up to enjoy and support. The more we can get eyes on this, the greater impact we can have. And obviously donations, like I said earlier, um, if you don't feel like being active, that's fine. We can penny pinch and get those pennies one at a time. So. Well, I'm so happy that I could meet you. Plus, yeah, uh, Jason is going to be live with on my on my show tomorrow morning. So, mm -hmm. another another way to get visibility, that's for sure. Yes, and thank you guys for supporting this and letting us have just a couple moments to share. It really does mean a lot. Oh my goodness, man! My pleasure. Hey, Dustin, anytime, and uh, I'm gonna put you on the spot. Why are you not in the hounds yet? Now, let's chat afterwards, man. How about that? <laughs> All right. <laughs> Appreciate you, brother. Hey, everybody go out there, scan that QR code uh, so you can be a part of something special. Man, these guys are the real deal. And the, the people you're around, that's all I need to see. I'm a simple guy. I just, hey, I see a team of passionate winners taking their time to do this. I know it's special because these people wouldn't waste their time, right? So passion project, do some good out there. You know, I haven't helped an old lady across the street, so I will, this is a good thing for me. All right, so I appreciate you, man. Absolutely. You guys be well and take care. Yes, sir. All right, let's get the show on the road because our patient guests are back there, unbelievable people. Um, yes. And I'm not even sure what I put on this slide. Hang on a second. What, what did I do here? Oh, <laughs> hey, join the pack. Publicity hub, insanity going on back here. Look, heart-centered, high-level professionals, don't do it alone. All right, nothing wrong with you. You just don't know stuff. You need support, resources, help. All right, be around people who will push you up, put your best interest forward. Dad gummit, there you go. That's it. Wow, I said to say I've been hanging around D. D. Grant Smith. <laughs> I'm I'm starting to be concise. How about that? And in contact, boy. I'm bro, but I'm telling you, no, I'm I'm joking, but I'm not. Like no, I know you're I'm not. Evolving. Of course you are. You're you're around people that are brilliant. It's gonna rub off, if, especially if you're coachable. So hey, we'll put the QR code on the top up there. Uh, what is? Oh, there he is. Let's bring him up. Let's just go ahead and do it. Let's bring both of them up. So let's say hi to Mr. D. Grant Smith. He is the welcome wagon. Um, leader of the Hounds of Business. I forgot what I was in. And <laughs> Meredith Ochoa, who I probably wouldn't have uh, been able to get on board myself. So see, no, there it, you go. It, it, Love it, on D. It took D. <laughs> yeah, and that's how we do it. Hey, find yeah. somebody, help them up, right? This guy was great already. He just needed to be around like-minded people and have some stuff, right? And then he goes out there and he brings in rock stars like Meredith Ochoa. That, that that's the vision man i can't wait for like 50 people down i'm like who are these people who can <laughs> they're here and that's where they belong dad gummit right man so all right so scan the qr code how are you today d i'm fantastic buddy how are you doing unbelievable i, I perked up like a flower man Just got <laughs> yeah 
bad. Y'all like, what the hell? And uh, Meredith, how are you today? I've had better days, but I'm here with you, so I'm better now. <laughs> hey, right thing to say. Absolutely. Okay, so, all right, D, let's start with you, buddy. So you have been on, um, wow, dude, you, you've been on that radio. You have a, tell, tell the audience, they may not know you yet. What is your background? Like, where did you come from? Right, and then we'll lead into where you're at. Well, uh, despite the image in front of you, I, I was not born on another planet and flew here as a baby. Uh, but I did come. I, I live in Texas now and I, I was not born in Texas. I was born in Alabama. So I've got deep south roots like where you live. Uh, and so one of the things about Mike that I resonated with right away, he reminds me of my Uncle Smitty. Uh, and the way that he kind of puts things together and his his Mike isms uh, were just like I, I, I harmonize with that really, really well. Um, but uh, yeah, I spent 22 years in broadcast media. Uh, my lifelong ambition from like age uh, somewhere along the lines of like 16 or so up till about 34, I thought I was going to just spend my career in radio. But God slash the divine slash the universe had different plans. Uh, and I transitioned. I was at a, a public radio station where I uh, created a radio show that I syndicated myself because I didn't have 30 grand um, laying around to market and, and get it added to other stations. But I, I did what Mike teaches. Um, another thing that he and I harmonized with uh, very well on when I saw that his methods of talking about how to build connections with people and treat people right were really about some of the same stuff that Dale Carnegie taught in 1933, uh, how to win friends and influence people, be old school, but actually care about other people. When you do that, you automatically become a very uncommon person because just about everybody in any industry is trying to showcase themselves. They can talk about how they're trying to help other people, but for the most part, and those of us, I'm going to point to myself, everybody in this room, we're all empathic people. We identify as that. We're highly sensitive. We have a special heart connection with our hearts and with ourselves and with other people, and we can sense things about people. And we can sense pretty clearly when somebody's interested in actually serving us or interested in getting into our pocketbook. And one of the ways you can benefit yourself and grow your business and actually serve more people is by doing some of the things that Meredith and I uh, are harmonizing ourselves with and serving the clients that we work with in telling the story that actually resonates with the hearts of your clients and your customers. And that's by actually taking the time to get to know them and caring about them. And by doing that, you're emitting an energy that shows that you're a different kind of person and people will automatically want to work with you. So answering your question, I transitioned from radio into doing the stuff that I do now um, by going through a strange and unique sort of gauntlet of experiences that involved a whole bunch of different stories. But now um, I've just harmonized myself with this, this mission that I have, which is to help people in the best ways that I possibly can and connect with the hearts and spirits and souls of their customers. And so that's, that's, that's my story, man. And it's a great story. And I resonate because I can, well, isn't all that loving on other people and all that stuff hard. I, I well, I mean, it could be, <laughs> no, but not at all, man, to me, hard is trying to do something I hate and, and, and persuade. And I, you know, I got this, this much convincing in me, but what we can do, and I learned how to really hone this in from you, D, and this is why folks are here. Hopefully you got pen and paper. I learned how to uh, do it in an intentional way. Like I learned how, who, who do I focus on? How do I communicate? How do I foster the best ecosystem or climate or culture to let that natural relationship unfold, right? They, these kind of things, value exchanges. So it's not a waste. If you just go run around helping everybody, man, that, that's a shotgun goofy strategy. But you understand, we'll talk about this later. You understand how to pinpoint people, right? Like how to identify folks, how to create that condition. We're not manipulating. We're just saying, hey, like speed dating, right? I, I can't make that woman like me, but I can have a system where at least the right one will. And that's how we approach business. So we get into that. Uh, do me a favor. Introduce your friend. All right. The only reason she's here. All right. Meredith. All right? How did you meet <laughs> Meredith? And take it from here, man. Well, so Meredith Ochoa has one of the most unique and inspiring stories of anybody I've ever heard. And by the way, in my all my time in radio, like I've interviewed thousands of people. I've connected with some innovative and like rock star level people and heard all kinds of stories. That was Another reason why storytelling is just a natural thing for me. I've always been interested in the story beneath the story of other people and what actually makes them tick. 
Meredith reached out to me because of an interview that she saw me do on a mutual friend of ours, a lady named Jenna Banks. But when she reached out to me, she asked me to be on her podcast. And I, and then she started telling me her story and I'm like, holy crap. She told me about how she healed herself from endometriosis. And I'll let her explain how complicated that is. But for you to heal yourself instead of, you know, having some sort of miracle cure or drug or something else, for you to do that for yourself is one of the most inspirational things on earth. So when she said, you have an inspiring story, would you come on my podcast? I thought, this is kind of like Mother Teresa asking me if I would come be a part of something that she's doing. Or, you know, some, you know, yeah. some gig like Wonder Woman or something saying, hey, I, I, saw, I, I saw you help this old lady cross the street and I thought that was really nice. Would you like to come like hang out with me sometime? I'm like, Jesus Christ, like, are you serious? So I responded to her and was like, I'm so honored that you know my name. And so we had a conversation and we connected instantly. And uh, as soon as I came into the hounds and saw all the benefits of, you know, connecting with like-hearted people, I was like, I got to ask her if she would come in and be a part of this thing too. And so all I had to do was introduce her to you guys. And uh, I'm, a, I'm a person of integrity. Truth is my middle name. Uh, I talk about Superman all the time. Superman always tells the truth. D. Grant always tells the truth. I won't lie no matter what. Truth is a big gigantic value of Meredith's and that's another reason why she and I are so harmonized together but I'm gonna I'm gonna let her now come in and and, and share about her because I've been talking too much no, oh my okay. god hey, we, <laughs> yeah that. man that, that look at her she's blushing now that wasn't it, I, everybody clap standing oh yes ma'am hey you you are you're original all right uh you I, when I saw her this is weird but it's me I was like wow I was like this is she's like my daughter in like 15 years like my, my, my little, I got to bring my little one up, right? Just, you just sharp. You just know who you are. You're, you're driven. So, Hey, introduce yourself. Cause I can't follow that. That, 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 that announcement was amazing. So go ahead. Dude, Tell us who you, what you do. It's so hard to follow. <laughs> like, I just, yeah, it is. I'm like, Holy shit. It's such a warm introduction. I'm like getting a tan. I'm like, Oh my, I'm like, burn. I'm like, Oh my God. Put some tan oil on. Oh my goodness. Um, so I, I'm just so blessed to be here and it is truly because Dee invited me and I say this all the time, but I wouldn't know any, like, I feel like it's such a diverse community we have in the Hounds. I wouldn't even have the opportunity to know you, Mike, or to know you, Izzy, if it weren't for the Hounds. Like we wouldn't even have this kind of depth of a relationship if it weren't for this community. And that's not only this community, that's just part of the gift of being an entrepreneur in general, you get to know people that normally societally would, would Mike and I ever have like a deep, a deep relationship? Probably not. Or me and D or me and Izzy. So I love being a part of this group because you're fostering these relationships that would never have happened if it weren't for you. So thank you for that. I'm a photographer and artist. As Dee said, I faced my shit and I healed myself. And I went through 17 years of debilitating pain with endometriosis. And I learned that all healing begins with being authentic. And so my mission is to help other people see themselves for who they really are and to help them face their pain. And a great way to do that is to just tell the truth. And so me working with Dee in this storytelling for business offering this project that we're doing it's like he said truth is my middle name as well and i feel like it's just the best marketing strategy that there is because you eliminate all competition when you are yourself because there is no one like you literally so competition's gone when you are just you and you tell the truth and you're authentic and you know it's a journey though. I think you have to be inauthentic and be maybe not yourself and go on that journey to really discover who you are. So I certainly am not on any kind of pedestal saying I've always been that way. Definitely took me <laughs> a journey, took me a time um, to find that. But now I really just love sharing my story and helping other people just be real with themselves and be real with the world so they can run their business and attract the people they want to. How did you, um, I'm very curious about that because more than likely I'm about your mother's age. 
So for me, it is extremely impressive to see such a, like I know you're not a teenager or anything like that, but such a young person having this kind of depth that it, it, it's like for me, it's impossible that there wasn't one major trigger for you. So am I, am I wrong or was that, was that only the fact that your body was going a haywire or? I mean, I think there, go ahead. I was just going to say, I was just going to say, is my question making any sense? <laughs> oh, fuck. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I don't know how censored the show is. Shit. No, the, it's not. <laughs> okay, cool. It's not. Oh, we should have checked with that. Yeah, oh, right. My ears. Oh, <laughs> but anyway, my just tell the truth. Just tell the truth again. Like, yeah, it was a shit show. No, it was many, many, many uh, triggers. It was I yeah. wouldn't say just one. But um, I would say dying or having a near-death experience definitely puts things in perspective for you where you just don't, don't sweat the petty things and don't pet the sweaty things yeah. as much. I say that, I say that too. <laughs> so it's, it's, but it puts you in that position where you just have to cut the crap because it's either death and destruction – or you rise from the ashes. So it's just a very polarizing place to be. And I chose the latter. So I, it's a, it's a much Beautiful. bigger concept than that or bigger story, but that's as much of a nutshell I could put it in. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, it's a uh, simple is always the right way to explain things I find. And you know, you just heard in, in, and D made you blush a little bit, but you just heard D explain what got woken up by you and by meeting you. So I'm going to ask the question in reverse. So what was woken up in you? What greatness was woken up in you when you met him? When I met D, well, first off, when I decided to write to D, I was already just enrolled because I get, I, when I saw him on Jenna Banks, like he, Basically, he was talking essentially about oneness, I believe, or something along those lines, some like greater truth, universal truth. And I was just like, this guy gets it. Like he just mm. gets it and like can put it. I really admire people that can speak well because mm -hmm. it's something that I have been learning to speak better. And actually, I don't say that from any kind of place of like being authentic or being true, but actually having like a certain cadence and being concise and being able to flow with the story well and the rhythm of just the voice. And he has that. And he also is telling the truth and also has like deep, profound wisdom. So it was all of those things that I was totally just like, I really need to know this person. And I'd love for them to share and elevate that voice on my podcast. And that that's why I also have my podcast to elevate those voices that people really need to hear because if you take a look around at our world, it doesn't really work that well. So if I can help even just one person face the music, set themselves free, it was all worth it. Well, I got to, I got to interject. That's why all of us work together. We, we got people who are trying to leave their job and people who are bored because they've already made it. <laughs> and that's, that's exactly because we don't have the daggum resources or we don't have the encouragement that that's it. And you two connected on that level. Right. So you guys saw each other. And, and so if you don't mind, um, I'm sorry, Izzy, did you, did I, did I steal your thunder again? I just told her to go ahead and then I'm just okay. I love you. Do you? Cause I don't know why. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> Well, let me let me. Well, we're gonna have a one-on-one on one tomorrow, and I'm gonna explain it all again because you keep on forgetting. <laughs> I know. Okay. No, no, so go ahead, me... go ahead. It's your show, dude. Let's go. <laughs> so you two, the journey. All right. So you reached out. That's number one. People out there, listen. Stop being scared to reach out. That that's the thing. Reach out, and and it's the way you reach out that matters. And I want to hear D about this because he's great at it. Uh, but you guys reached out, connected. Tell us about the journey. D, tell us your perspective on the journey of how you guys created and what you're creating together. Well, um, 
what we're creating together is different than what we originally kind of started that harmonized ourselves together. Um, when, when, uh, I was on her podcast, uh, we, so she, she said it, uh, and any of you guys that have had, I don't know, a conversation with me know that I'm not a surface level person. I just don't have that capacity. I think about things on very deep levels and I can't turn that off, nor will I choose to. So, uh, Meredith and I, had a very deep conversation that I think went like ex an extended period of time after the podcast part was over. We were just like, um, we need to, you know, continue this conversation. And I've got a, I've got a community of people that I've been building that are uh, empathic and uh, highly sensitive leaders. And it's the growth farming community. It's all about, uh, I've got storytelling and all kinds of stuff that I do in there, but I invited her to come be a part of the community. And so she came and joined in and uh, she she became a part of our group that meets once a week and, and harmonized herself with that very well and um, built some awesome relationships with some beautiful people that, that I've been building relationships with as well. And so that allowed us to see each other more regularly and have more deep conversations on a more frequent basis. And then we started talking to each other um, and uh, probably like once or twice a week or so. We just built this friendship and just kind of just kept checking in with each other over and over again. And uh, sometime in the middle of last year, toward of maybe towards the end of the, um, I guess, quarter three or whatever, uh, I told her about this thing that I was starting to do, which is storytelling for business. I had a couple people that I'd worked with. I told her a little bit about what that was. And she was like, oh, I want to do that. And all it is to begin, all it began with was just an interview that I would have and help businesses, business leaders dig deeper into their stories to understand what their story was. And so she signed up for that and came in and did a session with me. And uh, when it was over, she made these beautiful, amazing videos that you guys have all seen. If you've seen her stuff on LinkedIn and on YouTube, um, where she was taking excerpts from the interview that we did and turning it into these little one minute uh, clips that talked about her work and the stuff that she was doing. It was just so awesome. And I had this idea, I guess, about three months ago where I was like, I wonder if Meredith would team up with me and I do the storytelling side of things. And she takes the videos that I'm recording and turns that into these awesome little like customized, beautiful videograms. I wonder if she'd be up for that. And so I messaged her one day. We had a conversation. I asked her if she would. And she said without hesitating, and I don't even think she took a breath. Fuck yeah, dude. And so um, that the rest is history. Oh, that's so fantastic. I like the I, I love the fuck yeah, dude. Seriously, because that's that's true. It's pure. It's like it's it's a it's a raw thing. It's a raw answer. Meredith, how did how did that go with we know your answer, but how was it to receive the request from B? Because obviously you are both extremely fond of one another and the friendship that you have built together that's you know any a blind man can see that so how was that to be at the receiving end well actually i had already been thinking we're like probably like siblings in a past life or something because i was already thinking along those lines but i hadn't put it together as like oh yeah like a structured thing yet um but i had been I had been actually receiving kind of like requests or interest in, you know, these audiograms because they're kind of like little digestible audio, like pieces of art, like with branding or I use, I, with my own stuff, I put like my own artwork and it'll be like, you know, moving or it'll be, it'll be representative and complement whatever I'm saying is the actual captions. So it's just this really cool blend of like something really captivating that's visual, but then you also have the audio. So you're getting like these two senses from people. And so people can just get really into what you're saying and digest it more easily than like watching, you know, a whole episode of something or like, you know, it's kind of like Mike says, it's like the speed dating version, I guess. It's instead of like, okay, you're going like to get married or go to look at wedding venues or something, or even mm -hmm. going on a date, you're like, just like, let's see, let's like browse. And um, I have been thinking of it but I was so, when D said that, I was just like, fuck yeah. I mean, it was exactly raw like that because I was just like, yeah, like you kind of made sense of like all of that shit that was already in my head. So it was great. <laughs> well, it must've been flattering too, because when, when you, when you feel a connection with somebody and, and, and they include you, 
it's it usually feels pretty amazing. It does. Oh, it does. That's wonderful. Mike, I see you had a question and thank you for asking. <laughs> I mean, I'm working on my manners deck. I've Googled you're, manners. You're doing fine. Talk. You honey, you're doing you see, fine. You're doing I fine. know, I know. I have fun. I work hard all day. I want to I want to <laughs> joke on myself, Dad Gummit, I'll do it. And why ain't my when I say Dad Gummit, where's that magic box that, that says yes, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Okay. It's, it's chop, right chop, here. Chop. <laughs> Nobody's watching last week because we, we we nobody drank. I didn't say it. All right. So here's what I want. Everybody knows that I'm networking, but networking and collaborative and, and community and all that stuff. And by the way, chat with each other. Don't pitch slap in the comments. Ask questions up here. We'll get to them if we can. Follow each other. Chat with each other here, guys. This is for you. All right. You're spending your time. We love that. Um, make the most of it. It's, it. Instead of worrying about a viral post, worry about some viral comments right now. Okay. That That's where you get real business done. On that note, D, let's pick on him. All right. Uh, and then we'll go to Meredith. What is your experience before you found each other, before you started the, your own community uh, and before you started collaborating with each other? Like, what was it before? Because it seems like it was kind of ugh, like ugh, and then now you made a better way. So tell us about that journey from your past to your present. Oh, we're talking about my experience with connecting with other people or my experience with networking in general. Like, be more specific about your yeah. question. Yeah. So. When we go out there to do meet and greets to meet people, so you, you've already said you're empathic, right? You want to get to know people, but not everybody feels that way, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody, some people, so when you encounter somebody in the past, or did you encounter people in the past when you were on LinkedIn and business, and did you meet people who just seemed like they just wanted to sell or they pretended to want to sell? Is that what prompted you to do something about it? I, well, to be clear, um, so there, there's uh, my local chamber of commerce. I'm not going to go too deep into this, but uh, there's a friend of mine that I that I, I do business with now. He's my financial advisor. Uh, about ten years ago, uh, we met each other at a at a local kind of um, collab uh, chamber event. We exchanged inter we exchanged contact information, business cards, and all that stuff. We had a conversation. We kind of got around the room, and I'm a pretty talkative person. I like meeting new people, and I exchange business cards and all that stuff. Um, but he and I had lunch about uh, three months ago, and we were reflecting on our time within the chamber and with some of these other different groups that we were part of. And he's like, you know what, dude, you're the only person that ever followed up with me. And you're the only person that I still have interaction and contact with because you're you're real about this. Like you actually care about, you know, building relationships and stuff. And I'm like, of course I do, man. And he's like, well, what was your experience like? Did, was it hard for you to, to get people to follow up? And I'm like, it was in a way because a lot of people will give you their business card and they'll talk to you they'll talk to you in that moment but if in that moment they don't think that you're going to possibly be able to buy anything from them or something along those lines they immediately forget you and this goes back to what i was saying earlier about the dale carnegie stuff like i learned from reading that book and from my own experience that when i genuinely care about other people and I make it a priority and an intention to actually build a connection and remember who they are the next time I see them, we, they might not ever give me a penny, but their friendship in their life has to be worth more than some sort of monetary transactional exchange. Because what if in some crazy way, shape or form, us just hanging out and knowing each other benefits my life and benefits their life and something beyond business? And so what my experience has been to answer your question, man, is a lot of people confuse the idea of being in business with having transactional friendships and transactional relationships. And that's something that we are, I think all of us, whether you're empathic or not, we can perceive that. And people's BS meters are continuing to get bigger and bigger and bigger and higher and higher and higher. And it's making people a lot more resistant to wanting to have those initial conversations because they're dreading and fearing that the first thing you're going to do is try to sell me something. But also what I've noticed, because this is the way that I, this is the way that I operate and anybody that's here, I, uh, Melissa's here. And I saw uh, Scott Heathman's here. Um, anybody that has spent five minutes having a conversation with me knows that you're in the safest place you can possibly be having a conversation with somebody because I genuinely care. Right. And we can feel that. And so when you find yourself with somebody that isn't trying to sell you something and is actually providing value for you, what I've found is people will go out of their way to try to figure out how they can help me do better business 
without me having to ask for it. So in, in heart centered groups like the hounds, which is, this is one of the first experiences I've had where it's more people that are like me. I see reflections of myself everywhere and it's awesome. And I, I don't, I said, I don't say that with bravado or with ego, but like my mission on earth, Meredith talked about her mission. My mission on earth is to help people become the version of love that their souls came here to embody. My purpose is to be the best version of love that I can possibly be. So when I see and experience and feel somebody else operating as love, it feels pretty damn good. And I feel like I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be. And then all kinds of other benefits and blessings start pouring in from all over. Oh, wow. Uh, Dude. So I'm going to do this. I'm going to grab me a bunch of Hallmark cards so I can get half (laughs) as eloquent as you, brother. All right. Uh, So the idea. And number two. I want uh, Meredith and Izzy to chime in because this is why I accidentally created the hounds, man. Look, now we got robots talking to robots and and I'm not against AI. And I'm not, and I know you D you're not trying to say that you should just waste time with people who can't do business with you, but you can try to make more effort to connect on different levels. I mean, and again, if I connect somebody I can't work with, with D he might be able to work with them. And now I've got two people who are probably going to tell someone else to, to do whatever I do. Right. And that's what we try to think about. So you, you're dead on, man. Um, what would what go ahead, Izzy? Cause I know you, you're all over this. This is your wheelhouse. You were literally in the middle of a sentence, dude. <laughs> I know it, but it wasn't that good of a sentence. So I decided just, to, uh, nobody just to I, I, I loved what you, what you shared D because we, you know, I, I've done, I've done the chamber of commerce before and it's like, you know, 200 people selling something and nobody's buying. So for me, the approach, and I'm not saying mine was perfect, I'm not suggesting that, but the approach was extremely transactional. And you never know, you never know what people are going to bring to your life. You just don't know. You don't know who's watching. You don't know who's paying attention to you. You just don't know. And you said, for me, You said an extremely important word, and that word is intention. You went into this with the intention of showing up as who you are and actually giving a fuck about the people you were going to meet. And it's not, is this person going to bring me money or is this person is just going to take my time? Well, nobody can take your time anyway, right? You give it away or you don't. You choose to spend your time and invest time with somebody or you don't. And sometimes it's okay that we don't if we don't vibe with the person. But I'd be curious, since you so eloquently shared that about yourself, D, I'd be curious to hear our beautiful Meredith stories when it comes to that. Oh, wow. Putting you yeah. on the spot, chick. <laughs> It, oh, yeah, you it are. wasn't me. That was her. I want to make everybody note that. All me. I'm right. I made a she, note. She can take it. She can take it. I can. Yeah. I mean, oh, so networking. So, and I'm a member of the chamber too. And what I really, I, I value relationships as all of you do. I'm an empath and highly sensitive as D is. And I've really come to find relationships are so important because they never end. They just change form. If you just think about that, like they just, they never end. Even people that you've like cut out of your life, it's just a change form because it, it goes back to just the oneness and the simple truth that we all are one and more of a spiritual truth. But I mean, to just keep it simple, whatever you put out there, you're getting back. And that includes how you treat yourself, <laughs> like bold, capital, underline, italicized. <laughs> like, so I think sister. it's literally like how you treat yourself is how other people are going to treat you. And I found that through having better boundaries and relationship with myself, I had better networking and attracted better or more aligned people into my life. I mean, I think the chamber now where I live is a much different experience. I just Mm -hmm. moved to, um, but it's a much different experience, not only because of location, but because, and not even just because of the people, but because of me. And it's something that, 
I've really applied to in the hounds of just like, and it's something I was even talking like before we even came on here backstage of just like having those boundaries because boundaries are for you. And really like, it's not anyone else's judgment of that. No one else has to get it. Only you have to get it. So I think it really, it starts there. It starts like with the relationship with yourself and that makes networking and everything so much better. I mean, look, I was going to let you talk, and now I can't. Every time y'all speak, I get inspired, dude. No, because here's what D said. Hey, you got to meet this lady, blah, 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 blah. Well, now I got to because he's all excited. And this happens like daily in the house, man. It, it, it's it's almost magnetic. Like, we're not like, how did this happen? Every day we talk about it. But yeah, D said, hey, I want you got to meet her. So I'm like, okay. And then here's what's cool about it. I was, I, I agreed. I'm like, okay, she knows herself. She's happy with herself. She's, you know, honest. She's, you know, here it is. And I, it, it's far too often guys. And Isabel, I love your take on this. Cause you help people in this, but we don't think we can do that. We have to, you know, fart potpourri and we have to do certain things. And when you're an <laughs> entrepreneur, hell you are your thing. I mean, if you're an attorney and you know, you might have to fit the cultural mold, but when you're an entrepreneur, it's the opposite effect, right? Have y'all experienced that? Like, hey, the more you are true to yourself, I mean, look, I mean, the fact that I'm not homeless after a year of this, you know, like, because I bring great value, I actually care. I'm not perfect. I make lots of mistakes. But people just, we we crave belonging and, con and connection like no other. I mean, now everything's automated. Remember how we used to get mad because we had to talk to an automated phone call? Like, you know, <laughs> we want to talk to a person. That's how I feel every day. So what is your take, Izzy? Because what she said was absolutely dead on. I mean, you know, if she would have came and questioned herself and all this stuff, none of this would be here. She just said, hey, this is me today. This is what I'm about. And we said, yeah. What was your take on? Um, well, we there, there's no doubt that we teach others how to treat us. And that it that doesn't matter if it's your family member, if they've been in your life all, all of your life, if you whatever you tolerate, you're agreeing with. Unfortunately, that's just the way it works. And, you know, I've spoken on this stage many, many, many times about this, but no is a complete sentence. You say it with kindness. You say it not to refuse the other, but to do it for you, to set clear boundaries To, And it is, it's a complete sentence. And you say no, you're supposed to say no more often than you say yes. And you you say no to choose the other yeses because you, you're not going to live long enough to do everything that you want. You're not going to live long enough to experience everything that this world has to offer. So you say no to most things in order to give better yeses. So, yeah, that's 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 us. And we all on different levels we all struggle about that because we live we love people deeply and we connect with them and because we want to show up with for others but you can't pour from an empty cup you just can't so you have to show up for yourself first and take care of yourself first and people are going to judge you regardless of what you do so you might as well take care of your own damn self and gum straight you know, I said, you know, and again, that inner confidence, Izzy, you're dead on. I said, if I talk to, and this wasn't the case, this is recent. If I talk to a room of 2000 people and they boo, well, hell, I must've been in the wrong room. Now, it's like Lion said, like about the purple hair. Like you, I don't have purple hair. Why would you, it doesn't bother me. So D, uh, let's start with you, man. What are the benefits of great storytelling and marketing and who is it for? Is it just for, you know, Coca-Cola size companies or is it just for little people? Like who, who can benefit? Tell us a little bit at your wheelhouse, brother. Well, I, first off, that was a very, like, uh, very sudden jump into a completely different road. Uh, so I've, I've got to, I've, I've got to recenter myself for just a moment. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm ADD brother. We met before. So there we go. That, that That's right. Um, so it, who is storytelling for everybody because everybody is living a story and everybody's telling a story by the way it doesn't matter whether or not you have writer next to your job title you're a writer you've been one since you were born because every single thought you have is a story every single thought that you have has become a belief some some form or fashion a belief that is stored inside your subconscious that is running 95 percent of your life 
On the subject of business, though, what is it that actually connects with people to get them to not only take action, but resonate with what it is that you say and what it is that you do and join in with you in a place where they're coming back over and over and over again and showing you loyalty and dependability and consistency? <gasps> it's connecting with their hearts, not their minds. So what does that storytelling does? because we understand each other through storytelling. If you've ever read anything from Joseph Campbell or if you've never if you've ever heard of Joseph Campbell, you know about the hero's journey. He's kind of the uh, premier voice in the whole idea of the hero's journey. And all you have to do is study mythology to see that we have actually been telling the same series of stories over and over and over again using different characters and different themes. But the same basis of the story is repeated over and over and over again because it's the human story. And so each one of us is telling a hero's journey story. And when you tell a hero's journey story, not about yourself, but about your customer, oh, now you're speaking directly to their heart. Now they understand exactly what it is that you do in a way that your marketing language or your AI programmed, hey, chat GPT, tell me how I can market and create this ad for blah, 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 is never gonna be able to do. That's always going to be trying to get somebody's attention. And I don't know if you've noticed this, but nowadays the human attention span is less than that of a goldfish. So we've kind of gone downhill in terms of our consciousness in that regard. So if you want to actually reach people, don't try to get up here. You're going to not have very much real estate for very long. No, 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 no. Go for the heart. Go for the heart. And you do that by really telling captivating stories that speak to your customer and aren't necessarily specifically and only about you. Let's go back to the quote from Dale Carnegie. You make more friends in two months by showing an interest in other people than you can in two years trying to get other people interested in you. It's the same dynamic. When you speak the language of the heart of your customer and you focus on them, not just their problems, but their dreams, their ambitions, their passions, Oh, my friend, and now you're speaking in a completely different language, and now you have their heart. Going into Mike's references all the time when he's talking about dating, when you're trying to, when you're trying to connect with somebody of uh, opposite sex, same sex, whatever your persuasion is, are you trying to just like convince their mind to give you a chance? No, you want to capture their heart. It's the same dynamic. And we get it ass backwards the more we listen to all these marketing gurus that are trying to tell you how to go after things that are targeting uh, just capturing somebody's attention. F that. Go for the heart. Dang on. And, and you know what, Jeeve? And, and I know you know this, and I, I'm not trying to steal your thunder, but in the brain, stories aren't processed the same way. So it's not mm -hmm. only that people are going to actually feel touched about your story is that in storytelling, the brain just processes the information and attributes the story or relates the story to the person listening to the story. So you listen to a story and all of a sudden you, 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 you think, and it's not conscious, you think, yes, I've done this before, or yes, I'd love to do this, or yes, I've experienced something this, this great or this bad or this and it releases hormones in the body, the happy hormones and all the all the, the wonderful hormones that makes us uh, connect to one another. So it's not just that it's 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 going straight for the heart. It it goes straight for the for the heart because it is relatable and it doesn't matter what the kind of story that you say, it is going to be relatable to other people because we're all humans and that's what we have in common. Right on. Thank you, brother. Didn't want to cut you off, Mike, but I'm going to give you back your it's show great. now. <laughs> no, no, it's going good. You know, when I get up here at this time, it just drops the viewership. We don't want that <laughs> so, so, I mean, D, I mean, what the printing press didn't come out until what, eight, 1500s? So for thousands of years, we told stories, right? People would run around town to town and, and make money and tell elaborate stories that's how we were created so now we're losing that so we're craving something we don't see much and probably don't even know what it is i mean when's the last time you had a conversation with somebody and they can actually have one back it's it's really rare nowadays right mm -hmm. so meredith is this why you so you have a show a podcast tell us about it is this your kind of outlet to to kind of exercise your storytelling is this is this how you're able to really reach people through that messaging like tell us about it yeah. So my podcast is Face Your Shit, Heal Yourself. 
And it is just that. It is essentially based around the premise that the first step in healing is actually facing or acknowledging whatever that issue is. Um, really based around the premise that the truth will set you free it, once you acknowledge it and once you own that and once you accept that. So I, it's also the science behind the science part of my book, Face Your Shit, Heal Yourself, which is an augmented reality interactive book that captures the first year of my every phase art series, which is, and I feature this on the show, there's like a biohacking with art question. We have fun with it. Um, but it's basically, this series is going to go on for 13 years and it reveals how I healed myself of endometriosis, living by the different phases of the female hormonal cycle, which people are unaware of. It also serves as a response to people's everydays. I could totally nerd out and go off on like an art rant here for the next hour, but that is what it's about. And I was lied to for years mainly by doctors promoting big pharma, but by many other marketing messages and not a lot of other programming and a lot of other shit that was basically just lies. That's the cool part about the truth is that you don't need to believe in it for it to work. Or like that, it'll just always be there. The only thing that requires your belief in it to have any power at all are half truths and lies. So just acknowledging that is that statement is like so much about what the show is about. So like I like elevating voices like D, you know, elevating voices like I just had a Qigong practitioner on. Uh, we talk about a lot of modalities that have been basically squashed down or diminished or totally had like just false marketing around it. So that's really what the show is about and what I try to do there. Uh, I have to, it's my turn, my, I'd like to intervene. I have to intervene, uh, Meredith, just because I've, well, I am a little bit older than you and I have endome, endome and I can't say that word in English. You go ahead. Um, and I'm a survivor of ovarian cancer and it's still, on fucking believable that in 2024 everything related to the female reproductive system is still a fucking taboo and i'm that's why i'm swearing because it is pissing me off yeah and thank goodness we have people like you saying listen they don't study they don't study heart attack on women because they take for granted that it's the same thing as men it's not it doesn't present the same way so it's about time that people, especially younger people that are going to live outlive me, thank goodness, and that are voicing and saying, hey, listen, this is this was not in my head. This was yeah. it, this was in my body. This was this is no bullshit. I didn't invent this. This is this was in my body. So as a tad older the person than you are. Thank you for putting this shit out there and speaking about it and speaking your truth because it is important that we get, you know, the doctors and, the, and all of them on board. So thank you, Meredith. Mikey can take it away with your question. <laughs> oh, I, that's, that's it. So real, we're, we're coming up on the wrap up time. So I wanted to make sure that we highlight it, you know, the specialist, because you by yourself, Meredith, you're great. D, you're great. Together, I don't know. This is where I need D. Dynamo, what what kind of work? What <laughs> dynamic duo? Come on, man. Use don't your words, Mike. Use your words. Yeah, but where the hell's my cheat sheet at? That's a sketch or something. Yeah. Uh, so, what you guys collaborate? Tell us about the collaboration, D, if you would lead it, um, and and how folks can be involved with what you guys got going on, because you do some special stuff, man. Well, um to try to give some sort of superhero dynamic, I think that'd be a little bit unfair. You know, uh, I'm, it's, 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 it's a, it's a tag team unlike anything else. Um, I, 
Okay. I'm very big on I'm very big on sticking with my zone of genius and not trying to be a jack of all trades. I spent too many years trying to do that, trying to be all things for all people. And it just I was not fulfilled in that work. And I don't think I know I know I didn't give my best work to the people that I was serving. So since integrity is such a huge value of mine and like Meredith, since truth telling is also such a huge value, I'm going to do what I do best. I'm the best there is at what I do. And I dig into the story beneath the story for other people. I help people understand their own hearts in ways that they've not ever been able to understand it before. And I tell the best fucking stories. They will capture your heart without a doubt. Anybody that's read anything that I've done knows I'm telling the truth. If you haven't read anything I've done, message me. I will can I will give you stories to change your life, okay? I bring my storytelling superpowers to the table and Meredith brings her incredible ability to transform the way that you see yourself visually and from a lens of an artist and a photographer. And we take you sharing your story and put it in a very unique thumbprint sort of uniqueness. It's the only one that's going to be yours. Customized uh, presentation of the video side of things so that when you're putting your video stuff out there, it's not just you shot yourself with a, with a iPhone or an Android or your zoom camera, the there's imagery around it. There is customized imagery that Meredith made. That's just for you. And we're never going to use your customized stuff ever again. Cause it's just for you. Everything that we do is customized. Your story is customized. Your branding is customized, even though we're not necessarily doing branding stuff technically like, it's all just you. It's your unique fingerprint because you're putting your unique fingerprint out into the world to connect with the unique heart print of the people that you want to reach. And that's what this storytelling for business uh, collaboration is like. If you want to know what it looks like and what it feels like, both Meredith and I have been sharing the videos that we did together talking about this project and using Meredith's super awesome super powered skill set of the video creation stuff with the captions and the specific i think it says storytelling for branding across the top it's perfect you want to know what it looks and feels like there that's what it looks and feels like and uh again have a conversation with me it's going to change your life i promise how can you get a hold of us uh we've been it's been scrolling across the bottom of this thing the entire time izzy has been giving it to you this entire time we've had a conversation but that's how you get a hold of us hey thank you for that and yeah, absolutely. You you spoke at my LinkedIn marketing class and wow, everybody was like, uh, wow. <laughs> I was like, yeah, dude, because again, it's, it's what you say is as important of how you say it. You, you do both and you explode and you can sort, attract and repel the right and wrong people. So, hey, uh, Meredith, anything to add to that? This ain't no cookie cutter, copy paste crap. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and no AI man, in the comments. That's beautiful. <laughs> it's true. No, I, I love it. I think we should end the show on that because there's not nothing's gonna top that, man. Yeah. And oh, even yeah. though AI wrote it, use your brain and edit it because I, I was talking to a copywriter and she said that well, we got AI doing it. Well, they called her back to edit the AI <laughs> because it was so bad. I was yeah. like, Well, there's your savings, right? So yes. Meredith, go ahead. So what do you do uh, with with if you want to elaborate on what D said or just tell us what you do? Because you have your own thing. Right. And it's very special to you. Yeah, I'm an artist. Listen, D, like I said before, how we connected had the structure that made sense of like all, all the things I was already in alignment in my head and creating the storytelling for business. And because that is his specialty, my specialty is really helping others see themselves for who they really are. And through, through my art, I'm healed, but I also heal others. So I'm a photographer. Photography, in my opinion, affords immortality. It brings us back to all the things that truly matter, all the things that can't be bought, our connectedness, not only with other people, but with ourselves, how we see ourselves. Um, and I mean, listen, I'm a mad scientist. Like I'm constantly challenging the idea of what a camera is. I invented my own process where I turned a scanner into a camera. So the size of the file is like literally the size of the person. So it adds like this whole other layer of looking at someone. And it's a really ethereal, really beautiful effect there. I'm a mixed media artist. So there's a lot of different mediums that I 
employ to further illustrate my mission? Well, yeah. So people should go check go ahead, your out your ahead, page. So yes, no, go I check it out. out. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, Izzy. I was hoping you rescue me, but you took a breath and then I. <laughs> no, I went. I went to say something, and then you you started, so I I shut up because you know I'm trying to be oh. wary of the fact that it is your show. So mm. no, it's I our think show. it's the hounds of business. Oh, uh, thank you, sweetheart. Um, no, seriously, I think that you guys partnering up is just just makes sense and. Like I knew, I've known D a little bit longer, and I this is only my second conversation with you, uh, Meredith. So, but just hearing you, both of you talk, and even in the language that you choose, it 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 fits. So, I I can see how there's no losing, um, in even in being your friends, obviously, but in being your clients as well, because you're gonna show up authentically, and you're gonna you're gonna bring everything to the table for every single one of your customers so i think that's great and i cannot wait to be uh your client meredith one day i'm going to fly you to montreal so you can uh, take my picture i've said that to you already but uh i can't wait to work with d too because i think that d has this special extremely unique ability to draw people's story out of them and i think that's a beautiful and i I'm so grateful that I got to spend this time with you guys. Likewise. Likewise. Thank you. Wow. Mike, this is your show, right, dude. No, none of this, you know, again, people, oh, I can't afford this or that. or this. Stop that. Go have a conversation. Plug into these people. Who the hell knows what's going to happen? So you, everybody gives you a million reasons that, or excuses they can't do something. I'll challenge everybody. Give me one. You don't have to type it out. Ask yourself. We'll give you one reason you can't. Hell, that's good enough for me. So, you know, again, go connect with these winners, these like-minded people that, that care about others and see what the hell happens. Get unstuck. And that's my thing, guys. So, I, I, hey, love you all to death. You guys have helped me. Uh, Meredith, you're the real deal. Love having you in the pack. Uh, cannot wait to get you out there and explode you even more because the world needs that. They need what you do, right? Uh, and D, thank you for being a champion, man, going out there, making dreams come true, helping people out. Uh, seriously, you are. I mean, you're connect. You connected me with somebody the other day, and I was like, "Nah, this ain't ever gonna work." Come to find out, it works. Like it was great. I love being wrong, man. It's like, woohoo! I love <laughs> this. is great. And you know, again, I would have messed it up, but I got a D there, right? I got people that got our back, and so that. And by the way, let me shout him out one more time. Let me put it as over. I rambled worse than I did on this show. All right. And this guy helped me make sense of this. All right. Now he's not a, a right, but we got to say, hey, if you read my story and you say, wow, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's because I got a D. Grant Smith. Right. So <laughs> don't just say, no. look, look, D, you said it best. I'm going to close out with this, guys. You said it best. Well, they can't do business with me. So whatever. I'm not going to follow up. You know, maybe not. Maybe you sell cookies and they know somebody sells milk. Who, who do you know? Right. Get to know people. You don't have to waste a lot of time, but invest the time to get to know someone because you don't know who they know or what the hell they'll do next week, next month, next year. And you, it's easy. Just go send a DM or something. Go say thank you. Bring a little value, right? It's so easy nowadays. So thank you for that inspiring message, D. Meredith, you're amazing. Thank you so much, Isabel, for, for pushing the buttons, even though I keep pushing them, I ain't supposed to, uh, and still being okay. graceful. Man. So, and thank you to everyone, the audience, all the hounds, future hounds, friends of the hounds, scan that QR code, show up, all right, show up so we can help you, right? Don't, no man's an island, all right? Nobody's an island. Go out there, find your tribe, find multiples, just do something. We're, and here's my thing. If, a, if millions of us were getting unstuck and, and living a happy life and fulfilled life, I think we can cure homelessness and we can make big strides and major things if we were stopped doing stuff because we're too scared, all alone, blah, blah, blah. And this is what our calling card is. And yes, very successful people heard this and said, yeah, I'd like to be involved in that. And these people are becoming more successful, right? Whatever that means to them. So pushing people up, all that stuff, it's not corny. It's profitable. All right. So dadgummit, come check us out. Test us out. Uh, test drive like you would a car. You won't be sorry. So. Love you guys. Appreciate all of you. Next week, we got healthcare. 
pioneers in healthcare, people who got tired of waiting for shit to happen and just made shit happen. These are doctors, triple board certified pioneers in their industry. Do not miss that. Guys, love you all. Appreciate you. We'll see you on the next one. All right. Take care. Bye. Thank you all for stopping by. Be sure to follow, share, and like, and send me a message if you had fun today. Y'all come back now. Ha, <laughs> ha,